Hey, thanks for tuning in. By the way, this is a man. That's not important to the review in any capacity. I just thought I'd mention it. What? Here is a quick play-by-play -play of how the first few episodes of Hell's Paradise play out. The country's most heinous criminals, rapists, murderers, serial killers. Each of them are going to have an opportunity to be pardoned from all their crimes. If they can get the magical elixir of life on an island in which nobody has survived going to. Except for this guy who got a bad bout of flower aids. The less than poor souls will be accompanied by a samurai. And they're not here to help, no. These samurai are waiting for an excuse to execute these sons of guns. And these swordsmen will do exactly that for a essentially any reason. The courtesan attempted to seduce me. So I killed her. Right, cause that's what I would do in that scenario. Thinking about it in detail, the samurais are kinda unnecessary though. For these prisoners, this island is far more dangerous. It's a big, beautiful death trap. Seems familiar. Hell's Paradise mainly follows a specific pair up, Gabimaru and Sagiri. There's plenty to discuss with both, and I'll get to Gabimaru in a moment. But Sagiri. <laughs> I think she's all right. Sigiri is the type of gal who's real serious with a hint of spice. She's trained all her life to become an expert at decapitation. Why? Uh, her father was very good at it, and I'm assuming she didn't get much love. When it comes to the main man, he's interesting for a few different reasons. Information about Gabimaru isn't readily available. Hell, in Hell's Paradise, the entire first episode is just us watching people try to execute Gabimaru. But since he's the protagonist and we're told he's invincible, all they accomplish is somehow killing themselves. <laughs> I suppose if you had to break Gabimaru down, he'd be a slightly annoyed ball of hate. Man, this sucks. Gabimaru only ever has two thoughts on his mind. Bloodshed. And his cute as hell wife. Let's get you into the water. Not happening! <laughs> He's like a cat. That's the way to live. There's not much to dislike about Gabimaru. For such a stoic slash laconic guy, he's got a fine way of conveying how he's feeling. We've got mad, serious, vaguely confused, and empty-headed. The show does a lot with a very simplistic character type. And that's not just with Gabimaru. Sagiri also is rather straightforward. Similar to our main man and his desire to return to his wife, Sagiri only has one thing driving her forward. I'm not sure if it's political or not, but either way, super funny. This island demands a strength which you do not possess, because you are a woman. I don't want to be divisive, guys, but there's probably 17 roided out Ted Bundys on this island. Not the safest place for a young pretty thang. There's a whole lot of killing in Hell's Paradise. It's truly an impressive feat how many main characters are developed, then slaughtered. Nobody's safe, and as soon as you realize that, every encounter becomes arduous. The gore here is up to par, baby. I don't want to spoil it anymore, but people get destroyed. We're talking Picasso went to the human viscera aisle of the paint store. Add that to the surprisingly well thought out mystery surrounding the island the show takes place on, and you'll be constantly wrapped in anxiety. Is that femboy from earlier gonna be decapitated, or is he gonna get into bed with a couple of babes? I'm not joking. Come over here and fool around with us. And what? Probably a trap. Probably. Bad idea. But. 
This anime skirts the line between very serious themes and oddly placed comic relief. That's not something new at all, think Demon Slayer and even very early Attack on Titan. Hell's Paradise's execution is similarly as good, but with that added air of mystery and overall just you're not ever sure what's about to transpire, you can never be certain if that pretty girl is flirting with Gabi Maru or threatening to tear his entrails out. Oh, Gabi. It's important to take breaks whenever you get time. Don't you want to come in here and- No. In Hell's Paradise, the story flows at a breakneck pace. There was maybe one or two moments that felt like filler, but everything else was impactful, interesting, kept things moving. Even the classic anime backstories that take half an episode didn't feel like a chore. The only bad thing about how tuned up the show feels is when something moderately boring happens you get a little pissed off. You can only laugh so many times at Sagiri being belittled because she's a woman. I counted. About eight. A few less than exciting moments isn't anything to complain about. We can't always withstand the bombardment of gore and heart-wrenching madness. No, we need a little bit of that cleavage. Come on, I can hardly remember any lulls in the action. So, my name's Yuzuriha. I happen to be a ninja just like you. We're totally twins. Two Asaimon? That's odd. If you like mystery thrillers and a more mature viewing experience, then I can't recommend Hell's Paradise enough. It delivers on what it does well, all the way till its final released episode. And with that being said, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your American Otaku. This, of course, has been my co-host, Zero Two. And I'll catch you next time.